Hi, this is Mark Brown with Game Makers Toolkit, a series on video game design. Let's say you're making a game where the player can chop up enemies as a more efficient way of killing them. How do you teach the player that they can do this? Well, if you're making Dead Space, you might write, cut off their limbs in blood, then pop up a screen that says, shoot the limbs off of enemies for extra damage, then provide an audio log that says, listen, forget about shooting them in the body. You gotta cut off the limbs. Then have another character call in and say, shooting them in the body didn't seem to work. Go for the limbs, dismember them. That should do the job. And then pop up a screen that says cut off limbs to kill quickly. At that point the player might just start to catch on, or they might feel like they're being treated like a baby. Four years before this, Half-Life 2 managed to explain the exact same thing using just two moments and zero words. When you first enter Ravenholm, you see this, a dead zombie chopped in half with a saw blade in its stomach. Then, you notice that the doorway to the next section is blocked by this table and these blades. You pluck a blade out of the wall with your gravity gun, and at that moment, a zombie wanders into view. You instinctively hit the fire button, and wha-pow, you chop the sucker in half. And that's it. In about 10 seconds, Valve has taught you that saw blades are an effective weapon against zombies without making you read anything and without treating you like an infant. This is the sort of subtle design that makes Half-Life 2 so special and has given the game such an enduring legacy amongst fans. Throughout the whole game, Valve expertly directs the action and the player and without ever taking control of the camera manages to make you see something or feel something, make you jump or make you laugh. Oh, I'm back so soon? But for this video, I want to focus on the way that Valve's invisible guiding hand is used to make you learn something, and the way that Half-Life 2's designers teach you about the game's mechanics, weapons, enemies and puzzles without beating you over the head with pop-up explanations. From the very beginning of the game, it's teaching you how to play without using obvious tutorials. When you're escaping Barney's back room, for example, you need to learn how to pick up and drop physics objects to advance. And when this chap says, pick up that can the more defiant players will immediately learn how to throw objects. Valve continues to do this throughout the game. Take the barnacles, for example. These are monsters who draw you up with their tongue and chew you into tiny bits. But you're not told this, you're shown it. Look how you're introduced to these jerks. Now you know exactly what they do and that you should probably avoid them in future. A little later on, you have to squeeze through a narrow gap and you end up knocking down some barrels that are in your way. They slide down a hill and get caught by these barnacles tongues, teaching you that you can use objects to bypass this enemy. And then just around the corner, you get some explosive barrels and a whole host of barnacle tongues and you think to yourself, I wonder if I can do this? And now you know how to avoid and fight barnacles for the rest of Half-Life 2 and its episodes. Like the barnacle, almost all the enemies in the game are first shown to you in a safe environment. The first zombie you see is behind a fence, so you can see that it's able to throw objects, but you don't actually get hit. And when you first see a combine zombie... That's, that's like a... a, a zombine, right? <laughs> it shows you that it can blow itself up with grenades, but it does so from behind bulletproof glass. You're also taught how to kill these things. You come up from behind the first sniper in the game, so you can safely practice lobbing grenades at them before you have to fight the real deal. And before you battle the chopper in episode two, you have to use your gravity gun to remove this mine, which should help you figure out how to fight the helicopter itself. And when you finally meet the roller mines along the coast, maybe you'll think back to how you threw Dog's ball around at Black Mesa East. That part happens during a sequence where Alex and Dog explain the ins and outs of the gravity gun. So yes, more traditional tutorials do crop up in Half-Life 2, when you're learning about the sand traps, the beacon radar, the rocket launcher and the Magnuson devices. Characters literally explain the mechanics of the game and sometimes provide a place to practice too. But at least it happens inside the world in a believable space, and these moments can offer a nice change of pace and provide a bit of humour or backstory. Gordon, this is Dog. My dad built him to protect me when I was a kid. Valve uses a lot of tricks to help guide you through the game's puzzles, but without providing traditional hints or just giving you the solution. Like, take this physics conundrum where you have to weigh down a plank. Maybe you'll think back to the children's seesaw in City 17. It even has the same cinder blocks next to it. And this simple puzzle teaches you both about counterweights, which are used later in the game, and also that you should follow bits of rope or wire to find the next part of the puzzle, which is something that happens time and again in Half-Life. 
Other puzzles hint at their solution through the world design. This one, which involves using a grenade to fling yourself up to this balcony, has a big box of grenades in the corner, a wire that runs up to a green button, a scorch mark under the flap, and even a dead body up in the rafters. And sometimes puzzle mechanics are layered on bit by bit. At the beginning of episode one, you get this very easy puzzle to show you that you can plop energy balls into connectors. Then you do it again, and then you do it with an obstacle, and throughout this section in the core, the same puzzle is repeated, but the complexity ramps up just one notch at a time, so you're never overwhelmed. Valve would go on to use this style of puzzle game training in Portal, which maybe we'll look at in a future episode. Half-Life 2 is of course not the only game to explain itself without the use of tutorials. Classic games simply didn't have enough room on the cartridge for explanations, so were forced to show their rules during gameplay. Check out the description for a link to Ego Raptor's popular video about the ways Mega Man X does this if you haven't already seen it. And in the modern era, games like Resident Evil 4 and Super Mario Galaxy have done a good job of teaching players in an organic, understated way. But it's still uncommon, and today's games far too frequently fall back on the bog-standard teaching mechanics that either break the flow of gameplay or completely patronise the player. Yes, some games may be too complicated or open-ended to copy Valve's solution, and not every developer has the luxury to spend years on playtesting, but I hope that more developers are influenced by the way Valve teaches its players and not just its physics puzzles, its dystopian future and those damn tram ride intros.